I bought Cantata from a very nice bloke called Eric in Chichester, near Chichester, um, just over ten years ago, which is quite shocking because it's it's flown by. But at the time I was still in business and I really didn't have time to sell her. The original plan was to buy a Sadler 26, which I had read about in all the magazines and concluded that it was the right sort of size for me and even went to have a look at a couple but just realised that, that extra three feet and I love the Sadler's kind of reputation for seaworthiness and unsinkability, touch wood um, and uh, so I found a very good example in, in Essex and then came across Cantata and went down to see it at Sparks Marina in um, Hailing Island, Chichester Harbour and just that little bit of extra space but Eric really had kept her so beautifully and everything was so well appointed that it was just a done deal it was the kind of get it right first time and won't have to do it again that was the principle and have you done much work to her at all? Um, I have this winter um, and I've caught up because I hadn't in previous years she'd been a bit neglected because where I retired from my business I had a fairly bad motorcycle accident in Greece uh, came out of my business got together with my partner Deborah um, the last five years have kind of shot by and uh, she'd been sadly neglected she was still in good order but uh, I've spent quite a lot of money this year on the electronics and redoing the hull just painting and scrubbing and cleaning other than that not really no she's pretty much the same she was built in I'm pretty sure in 88, or commissioned in 88. Right, okay. Um, and I bought her in nine, uh, 2006. Right, okay. So and what did you pay for her? £27,500. A lot of money then, and a lot of money now. Um, what she's worth now, I don't know, but I would like to think she probably hasn't depreciated that much. Um, but originally I was budgeting for about 15, 16 and just got carried away on the basis of get it right first time. And, I have. and have you outgrown her yet or not? No, and I don't think I ever will. The only time that I would consider something bigger, I really think, is if I were to keep a boat permanently in Greece. Because then you just want the space and you'd want the shower. Um, I suppose I could put a shower here. That uh, that little slot down there where the um, transducers sit, and I've just replaced one of them, uh, is referred to as the shower tray, so it's all possible. She's nice and roomy down below, isn't she? She is, and very warm. The, the double hull construction makes a world of difference. You don't get really even very cold weather. You don't get much condensation. Um, and of course it adds the buoyancy. It does take probably about 50 mil all round. Um, this is all a, effectively a boat within a boat. So, you know, there would be that little bit more space all the way around if it weren't for that, but it makes it so dry and, and cosy. I mean, for a 29 foot boat, it, it's got the feel of a bigger boat, hasn't it? I, I guess so. I often wonder how she would be, whether she'd be big enough in the Greek islands, because Deborah and I spend a lot of time there. And it would be interesting because, of course, what you need there is space for the wind to blow through because the big danger is that you're going to be too hot. So, um, never know. Maybe we'll find out one day. And talk me through where, where your cruising grounds are. Uh, well, as I say, I mean, I'm a, a really a novice. I just started sailing a, a year or two before I bought Cantata, which seems like a bit of a jump, but obviously, you know in your 50s you can't hang around with these things and I'd started uh, by cruising on someone else's boat uh, across to Cherbourg, Cartray, uh, Guernsey, Guernsey um, Alderney and then again round to Samvar and Grand Comp um, so we've done a little bit of France and other than that the West Country, Dartmouth, Weymouth a few times um, and just locally so now that my time is theoretically my own, hopefully there'll be a lot more cruising around the southern and further afield. Uh, next big plan is over to the continent along the east coast.
across the continent and I really want to get up to the Schelt and through the Dutch waterways because I used to live in Holland as well. So uh, keep the mast up and go right up to the Isselmere is the plan for next year, hopefully. And she is a bilge keeler, isn't she? She is, yeah. There are a lot of the saddler owners will say it's a twin keel, not a bilge keel, but there's no difference. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't do anything else around the Southern, really. You never know when you might, might want to take the ground. So, And in, in the creek here, it, it makes perfect sense. So. And what, was she your first boat? Yes, yeah. yeah um, one of my friends locally, uh, Dave Deacon, lent me the use of his vivacity for a year or so before I bought Cantata. And that's where I taught myself to sail. Um, and that was it. That was a 18 foot bilge keel kind of dinghy with the roof on. So you're really hooked now, are you? Yeah, yeah, and I just hope we, we find the time. You, you know, it's 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 strange, you know, you, you take all the trouble to retire and get out of work and then you find other things crop up and stop you doing what you want to do. But from now on in, both of us are very keen that it'll be travel, 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 and in the interim when we're back here, sailing, sailing, sailing. Don't look at the camera. Hello, Mum.